G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now, you may recognise these cordless compressors. I did a video with them using these airbrushes and if you haven't seen that one and you want to know more about are these cordless compressors any good, then click the link which is up here somewhere and go watch that one first. But if you'd like to dive right in and see what I've got to say now, especially as I've replaced the airbrushes on the cordless compressors. Now, this one came from Spray Gunner in the US from Florida I think and it came with a reasonably competent airbrush on the cordless compressor and it was fairly good. I changed it over and I put my Awata Neo on there. That made it fantastic and I've been using this constantly. And also in the last video I didn't realize there's a button on the bottom which when you press everything lights up and I thought it was just a battery check but it actually also sets high and low pressure. So I was able to get high pressure out of that and shoot Steiner res out of a cordless compressor with a Neo. And then I was able to go to low pressure and do some fine detail painting with a Neo. Wasn't bad. This one, this one I got on eBay from somewhere in China. It was a cheap deal and I paid the price. The compressor burnt out in the first week. The battery died shit itself. And um, basically it has been very disappointing. I didn't get an adapter with it to be able to fit anything else, so I had to get Bernard to make me an adapter so I could fit. This is basically my Iwata Revolution. It didn't come with this standard airbrush, but it's... Look, it's all right. It's just a cheap airbrush. That's all right. No matter what country it comes from, because I've been bagged for saying Chinese, but honestly, this came from China. It's a Chinese airbrush. I'm not actually causing any kind of national bloody incident here. It came from China. It's a Chinese airbrush. It's no good. By converse, this came from America. It's a crap airbrush, okay? This is a little cheapy little masters. Now, I don't know if it's better when it's new. I got sent to it by a friend who said, you should really be doing airbrushing. And I was kind of trying to avoid airbrushing with uh, with my models or sticking to just the, the hairy brush and using rattle cans. But I'm glad I've got back into airbrushing again after all these years. Anyhow, he sent me this cheap little master G25. I think he'd pretty well wrecked it. Well, it was full of paint, dried out enamel paint when I got it, so that tells you. But this is a cheap, horrible airbrush that I got from America. See, it doesn't matter what country it comes from. They can be cheap, they can be good. This is good, and that would be made in China. That is poor quality product. But Bernard's, which comes from basically, well, comes from uh, San Diego, but it's still a Chinese compressor. His is still going strong. And he swapped over, he, his came with an adapter, and he swapped over and put his badge on it. He's been going great with his, he still likes it. And then this happened. Yes. Now it looks a bit like that other black one, but look, it's got this red stripe, so it goes faster. Yeah. Not only that, that red stripe means you can take off the battery. Okay, so that battery just pulls off. And then this airbrush can go a lot longer because you've got a spare battery. That'll run about half an hour out of them on average. So you get an hour's worth of airbrushing. That's continuous, so you could be you know, airbrushing for a couple of hours on and off doing things, and you're still running on the same batteries. It also came with the adapter which Bernard's one like that. His came with the adapter, so he could instantly put his Badger airbrush on there. But the adapter meant I could straight away click on my Iwata airbrushes. But not only that, I was able to add my quick release mechanism, and all my Iwata airbrushes have a little quick release bit, so I can click off, if you've never seen one. All right, click. I don't have to worry about all that screwing, okay? They just click on, click off. I can swap to any of the airbrushes that I need to use on this cordless compressor. In a segment we call the Uncorded Gooch, where I tug at the problems of cordless airbrushing. Oh dear. Okay, roll the music. <laughs> All right, let's begin. This was the first cordless compressor that I've bought, and it came with this airbrush, which fits straight on there. And that's about all I felt you could do. You couldn't really add anything else. That's because I didn't have the little adapter. If you buy this particular compressor from Neat and Handy, you get the adapter. And that's what Bernard got. He got one of these with that. I bought mine on eBay from a less than reputable probably supplier, and I probably got a dud in the batch, and that's why mine died. It's probably not indicative of all of these in this style, because Bernard's is still going. So there you go. Just buy from a reputable source. That's all I can say. Now what I did, as I said, I've put snap fits on these. So let's see if we can get these off. Now neat and handy also give you 
this little thing, which I didn't get. I didn't get my cheapy one. So the thing, it pays your money and you get set. This little adapter thing turns this into a dual action airbrush. Without that, you've only got a single action airbrush, which is essentially what I ended up buying. So that would fit onto there. Okay, and you have a single action airbrush. Basically, you turn it on, it's blowing air, and then you push down for paint, or you pull back for paint, and that's it. Pushing down does nothing, does nothing at all. But if you buy the better quality one, well, it's a better presented and probably quality control check one, as far as I can tell from neat and handy, you get this little adapter, which screws onto there. That changes it, I forget the designations, right? There's, there's technical people will know, is a little hole, and that's a big hole. And when you've got a big hole, you can basically start fitting things like this little adapter they also give you and then that will then screw on your cheap airbrush right your basic airbrush and it becomes dual control so now you do have push down you do have pull back you have full control so when you turn your compressor on the air isn't blowing straight away because this is how i burnt out my previous one without this adapter thing when that airbrush is connected there and you switch on you're blowing air so I thought, I'll see how much air it blows, put it on my workbench, and there it was blowing air, left it there, came back half an hour later and it was really making some horrible noises and it was too hot to touch. And then when I'd switched it off and tried it again, the battery just died within a couple of minutes and it never charged up again. Still ran on USB, I could plug in the USB cord, which was for charging, into it, and I could run the, um, the compressor. So it was still kind of useful, but it had lost... It had lost its portableness. All right, so those two adapter pieces are what you need. So if you're shopping for one of these, right, and this was only about probably $50 US, delivered, I think, but um, I'll give the uh, web addresses at the end of this video. Neat and Handy were the ones that sold that and the new one uh, that I've got, and they seem to be fairly good to deal with. The products came quickly. They are exactly as described, and they worked. So, yeah. But you need this. Without those two little adapter pieces, you really can't start adding any other airbrushes. You're stuck with this. Now, if that's not a concern for you, you're not worried about just a little basic airbrush, you're away. Not a bad little product. It's cheap. It's simple. If you buy from a good provider, then you will be set. But let's see what you can do with the other ones. This is the No Name Compressor. That literally is the branding name. And it's from Spray Gunner. And it came with this airbrush, which says startairbrush.com, but I don't even think there's anything at that URL. If you go to it, I think it's all changed and shut down. But this airbrush that it came with wasn't bad. It's metal. It's got a bit of weight. It feels good. Go back and watch that other video. I described that airbrush in detail. And it's quite good. In fact, this setup is quite good. You're going to pay a little bit more. You're going to pay probably about $80, $90 US delivered. Okay. So in my money, it cost me about 10, 11 shekels to get it here those people that, that still understand my shekels. Now, to get something on here other than your um, garden variety sort of basic airbrush, well, I wanted to put on something like, you know, my Revolution. But the trouble is with the Revolution and even my Evolution, they have the valve contained in here and it's all fixed. You can't pull it out, okay? So even with my quick release off, this whole section here is like a valve for the dual action. Now, that valve... Okay, that's what the valve is. Okay, that's a dual action valve. But the beauty is this is an Awai Water Neo, okay, which is their bottom base thing. And I think the airbrush is even, I think it's made in China. It's made somewhere in the Orient. So again, not a bad airbrush. I want a Neo. Actually, it is, you know, a lot of people bag it, but it will do just about anything. I can do fine work. I can basically coat, put base colors on. I even got Steiner Rest to run in this. 0.3 needle, basic airbrush. You can do a lot with it. Badger and all the rest of the other guys, they've got a similar sort of entry-level airbrush that you can do all the basic stuff with. Now, with the Neo, you can remove the valve because that valve normally sits in there. If I can get it in. So that's normally seated in there, which is the valve for your dual action. So that gives you your push down for air, okay? So your pullback for paint will happen on a single action, but on a dual action, you also get push down for air. So, at least in my experience, there may be other ones. But... So that valve mechanism, if you can remove it, and if you can make yourself a little adapter. Now, the reason I needed to make a little adapter piece for this no-name one, 
okay, is it doesn't start working until this valve is pushed down. Right? So because of that. The other type of airbrushes, they once you button them on, right? Like my new one or that, that old one, they've got a button. Once you button on, it's pushing air. But this is automatic. It only starts pushing air when you push down, which is kind of handy. So when you push down on your dual action airbrush, you get air. There's a bit of a delay. You have to get used to it. So the only way to make that work is I had to actually extend the mechanics. So I made up a little ring and a little rod. And with those two inserted into each other, see if I can do this on camera. So that goes on there. And with some finagling off camera, because it is a little bit fiddly, I, um, I got it together. You have to put the rod into the airbrush upside down and the ring into the compressor and then try and bring the two together. And once you've done that, you've extended what's going to happen with this button, right? This button for air. Without that, you're pushing down and it doesn't connect. So all I've done is extended the rod that's in this airbrush. So with that happening, I have a dual action airbrush that will automatically come on when I need to and it won't be continuous all the time and burn out. So I have for nearly six months used this and it has been a success. Just an I want a Neo because I couldn't get my Revolution or my Evolution onto this one because it just didn't work because of the, the whole business with the valve and the needing to push down. So I did fine work, I painted you know, all the usual grunt sort of painting that you want to do. And I even managed a half hour, a half hour session of Steiner Res painting a boat. I was working on my Airfix um, St. Louis, if you've seen those videos. Well, the entire hull halves, which was basically 15 minutes on each hull half, and that was pretty well continuous. I was only taking little breaks now and then just to maybe wipe the, the tip because Steiner Res will kind of dry as you're working anyway. But half an hour out of the compressor and it still had not shown flat. In fact, I have never flattened this compressor. It's never gone, er, stop. Not once. And I've used it lots and I always get a bit worried. I've been using it for a week every now and then. And then I think, gee, I better probably charge this thing up. So I'm forever charging it. My buttons down here never, ever show anything other than five lots. So, you know, so you do have two settings with this, which I didn't realize. You hear that? That's low pressure. I didn't know that in the last uh, video. So there you go. A lot of people picked that up and they let me know. Thank you for that. It was innocent enough mistake. I did not read the instructions. <laughs> As we do. You know, we don't need those stinging instructions. No. But this has been great. So quite frankly... This is a good buy. If you've already got something like a Badger or an Iwata, you know, or, or any kind of reasonable quality base airbrush that you can pull the valve off, that's the trick. The valve needs to come off so that you have this part. You could use this. You would need to make a little adapter, as I've done. It's simply just a little uh, Evergreens ring of um, a scratched plastic that I have, and then a little rod. And it didn't take much to figure out the length of that. I can put the specs at the end of this video if anybody's interested. Once you've got that, you have a very workable cordless airbrush. But I wanted better. I wanted to be able to use my clips. It is my best airbrush, and it's the one that I really enjoy using. So... It has been sitting there dormant for all this time because I just couldn't get it on that white compressor. I could get it on the black one, okay, but with Bernard's adapter that he'd made and given me. Lots and lots of plumber's tape to try and seal up that plumber's crack because no one wants to see a plumber's crack, do we? No, and then my quick release. And so that gave me a way to use my clips. And it wasn't bad, but this whole arrangement was a bit ungainly. And the thing is, I still had to have it attached via USB. So I wasn't really getting the full cordless experience. But it worked. And I, you know, I had some success. And then there was advertisement for this one. And I went, oh, that looks interesting. Removable battery. Came with adapter. That sounds good. And you also, they said... The Adapt also comes with the valve setting so that you can make the airbrush supplied basically a dual action. They admitted that the airbrush that came with it was only single action. Because a lot of the advertising when I got the um, when I got this one said, oh, you got a dual action airbrush. Well, 
the buttons might be there, but it doesn't work because without that valve, you don't have a dual action airbrush. So this new cordless airbrush, cordless compression with airbrush, it arrived from San Diego to Australia and it was only, oh, it was just over a week. I was pretty surprised how fast it arrived because my other one I think took a little longer, although maybe not. But anyhow, eh, good service, good delivery, good communication the whole time. I knew what was going on. Neat and handy if you want these kind of cordless airbrushes, I can highly recommend them. Okay, so they will have both the one without the extra battery, which is a lot cheaper, which is the basic one, and it's okay, but you will get the adapter with it, or you get this one, which is a lot better, in my opinion. Now, presentation is true. There's a lovely little box, okay? So that's quite nice. So nicely presented, nicely delivered, nicely packaged. It was terrific. Your uh, cordless compressor, mine came charged. So my batteries were already working, they had some charge in them. I was able to just pop it on and start things going and put the spare one on charge just to make sure and it didn't take long to charge up. So both of them have been charged, that was really nice, so that came. There's your spare battery. And they just, they just say screw into the bottom there and then they have little connectors, so that's good. You get a whole lot of bits and pieces with it, you get a ginormous cup. Yeah, if you want to spray paint your car, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, most of us will um, just be using a standard size cup if you use this airbrush. Now they're um, they're plastic, and you know, make of it what you will. Bernard's one with this cup, he actually broke that cup after well, six months of using his cordless. So it's what it is. Okay, it's what it is, and you accept that. You get the airbrush, and in the box it is connected to another light receptacle. So again, if you're priming, you would use that one. And it's not too bad. You would, you, you know, you get some priming out of this. It's got all the adjusters. Look, I went into detail on that kind of airbrush in the last video, so go and look at that. But the difference is you get, and this is what is so much better, is you get, oops, that little adapter, which allows you then connect to larger size things such as any of my iwatters and probably the badges right so that'll screw straight into those and you can also remove that if you don't want if you don't want that functionality you can just have it as a single action airbrush so all of those things are included and it's well worth the money just for those so once you've got your little adapter and say like me you you really don't want this basic sort of airbrush you want to put on you know, you want to put on your stuff so you could do that and then in you go that will screw on and you're ready to go all you've got to do now is button on and you have a fully functioning dual action airbrush now this one has a nice little um, light which lets you know that it's still charging up it's still going right and you can you can use it as a uh, laser beam <laughs> So it's rather nice. I do like the whole, the feel of this one. Not that you'd hold your airbrush there, but if you practice two-handed airbrushing, and, and to any beginner, that's probably a good idea to get steadiness. You can hold that there, which means you can button on. You put the button at the back, right? Because obviously you can twist these around anywhere you like. I like the button at the back, so my thumb can go on there. My airbrush is there. All right, so I can button on. No air coming out yet. Air, paint, that's it. Button off. Uh, I've got full control. Very easy to use. And I've been using this one for the last week with both my Revolution and my... Um, this is my Revolution and my uh, Eclipse. So I've been basically priming Steiner Rest and then I've also been painting some uh, details on my ship using my two brushes. But to make it easier, because I wanted to swap between brushes, is rather than having to do this unscrew all the time, which you know you you do with a compressor hose as well. You you you'll be spending your life screwing. Instead of that, you get yourself one of these. They're readily available. It's just a quick release adapter, and that will screw straight in. Okay. And then you buy a whole lot of these for all your airbrushes. Right. You need one of those adapters, but you need. One of those on the bottom of each of your airbrushes 
and I've got that. I've got one for everything. I've got half a dozen of these bloody things now. And then click O. We have the Eclipse in, and I could go click and another one, and you don't lose any air pressure. Everything's fine. One good trick is that this one that I have has a trim, and I found the full battery when this battery was fully charged. And then I put the full pressure through my revolution, which is a 0.5 needle. The Steiner rays blew out at a ferocious level and actually splattered everywhere. I went, hang on, something wrong here. And I realized because of the larger needle size and the fact the battery was full of juice, I had too much pressure. No problem. I could trim it down with this. So I actually took it all the way in and only used three half turns, so a turn and a half out for my revolution. That gave me the kind of pressure I needed with Steiner rays. And as things thicken up, as they do with Steiner Res, I was able to basically wind it out a bit more, get a bit more pressure. So that gave me pressure control, which is what is lacking with these airbrushes. You're at the mercy of whatever this is pushing out, and you don't know what it's pushing out. I've heard talk of people buying a little pressure gauge to try and fit on here, but remembering everything you fit on should, in some way, slow pressure down. Well, it certainly will create more of a path for the air to go through. Don't know. Be nice to have a little pressure gauge on that and then the screw, but then it's going to get so ungainly. As it is with the quick release, as good as the quick release is, it's a bit of a pest because now you've actually got quite a long thing. So now when I'm holding it, I'm actually holding it completely above. Having said that, though, People are going, oh, look, there's all that stuff in the way and these will be difficult to use. No, no. This is no worse than if you had a cord or your hose, right? If you've got your hose running off the back of your airbrush, that has weight and that can get in the way and that can tangle and you can get mixed up and fouled up and that and it's always there, it's always present, it's always banging against you. This weighs less than your hose. Really, it does. You don't know until you try one. They weigh bugger all. It's air. It's just air. Well, there's some metal in there. But anyhow, with that on, I've got quite a grip, like a gun grip. And so now I'm away. Time to compare cordless compressors. Now, the best way to do this is to keep the airbrush, the paint, and the thinner constant. So I have mixed up some of that jet black that I used in the last video. So basically the same as I did last time. And it's is going to be consistent amount of thinning between airbrushes, same paint. I'm going to use the same airbrush on each compressor so we don't change things, okay? And I'll use the Neo because the Neo is a nice little all rounder, okay? So it's not a super expensive airbrush, but what we want to see is how does it compare. No, not much point of me putting on the Chinese airbrush onto here because we already know what that's like. That's in the last video, okay? Go back and watch that. You can see the, the silver one wasn't bad, even the black one wasn't too bad. You could use it. But let's see how we go once we put something nice on there. All right, first off, we'll use the Spray Gunner cordless compressor. One, two, three, four, five, six drops of my secret sauce there. Okay, it's already been pre-mixed. We're away. Let's see what happens. We have air when we push down and... Okay, fine. Going back. The coverage exactly what you'd expect from a neo okay and then if we wanted to go to something very fine see if we can do it oh got a bit of spluttering there silly me Probably need to be higher up. That's the only problem. Is this is one thing you you need your subject up fairly high when you're using the cordless compressors because you can only get down to there. So here I'm trying to do this. So we we might go sideways. See if the paint doesn't fall out of there. All right. So just the sort of performance that I would expect from a Neo works fine. And I think that's under high pressure. So let's push our button. Okay. We've got low pressure. So on low pressure, what have we got? Well, that's better for coverage. I think I've run out of paint. Yeah. Under low pressure. <laughs> well, let's put a little more in. So I really want to uh, show the difference. So I've got a bit more control under low pressure. Yeah. Can we go nice and fine? Oh, yeah. Okay, 
So hopefully you can see it. I'm getting fine lines as I expect. So this one has the advantage, the no name one, no name compressor, in that with a reasonable airbrush, I can get fine lines, really fine lines, and a lot of control, as you see, a lot easier to use than um, that black Chinese airbrush. Probably on par, but I, I think it's a little bit better than the silver airbrush that was supplied with this. It's a Neo, I'm used to it. I know it's uh, it's jerks and works, right? So um, I'm very happy using it. So that is a brilliant combination. No problem at all. I know that you can airbrush Steiner res through these. Amazingly, right? On the high pressure setting, you can put Steiner res in there. Half an hour later, you are still going. You'll have to wipe the tip a few times, you know, but you normally would have to do that anyway. Okay, so this one, gets the big thumbs up. That is worth buying if you've already got an iWatt airbrush or you'd need a Neo, something you can take the valve off. If you've already got something you can take the valve off, you can click one of these on straight away. Might need to make a little adapter as I've done and you're away. It's everything you need. Moving now to the cheapest one of the lot, which is the black one I got on eBay. Now you can get this from Neat and Handy and you will get the adapter and all the rest of it. And as I said, they seem to have better quality control. So you get a good one of these from Neat and Handy. Nothing wrong with this compressor. It just doesn't have a lot of the features the other ones do. So unfortunately, mine is tethered because I blew my battery up. But basically, just to give you a comparison, again, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're going to need a few more. Okay, there's some into it. Just blow the water out of it. Okay, so again, Neo, this time on this guy. You can hear him thumping away. A bit splattery, but you know, really big. Well, it certainly went through that paint very fast. Might have to mix up more of this. Because you don't have any pressure control unless you've got one of these. That's where this is going to come in very handy. So with a bit of pressure control, oh, then we've got we've got more control to do things. So oh, my problem is with this stupid little here is very ungainly. But what you can see, if you go back and look at the last video, you'll see you can get, you know, this does work and it gives you reasonable results. Even when I swapped over and I changed from the black cheap airbrush to the slightly better uh, Chinese silver airbrush, right, I was actually getting some good results. Turn that off. So this one's not too bad for the dollars, but you're not going to get, well, you've got to buy it from neat and handy to get the little collar adapter, right? And then you can screw on the kind of airbrushes that you might like to use. Let's move on. We'll have a look at the new cordless compressor, which is the one that really I want to show off in this video. All right, the star of the show. This is the one from Neat and Handy, but it is the one with the changeable batteries. Interestingly, the um, battery charge socket, I would have thought would be the same on the eBay one, which is basically just one of these without the extra, um, extra battery attachment. But no, they've put a different adapter on there and it sounds different. So we put this one on. Right. It kind of has a different sound about it. Now again, I'll just adjust out my pressure, so full pressure, same thing, same airbrush, right? we're always comparing apples with apples. Alright, bit more pressure. Okay, and then we can lower the pressure right down, if you've got one of these that is. And let's see if we can go fine lines, how we're looking there. Again, this is the disadvantage, this stupid, because you've got the thing, this great big heavy thing in the way, you have to have your subject high. Now what I've been doing, running out of paint. What I've been doing when I've been painting is I've made sure I had a little stand. So I've raised my subject up. So my stand needs to be about the height of the compressor. So therefore I can spray straight onto it. It needs to be raised up. So you'll have to have a look then because you might not have enough headroom in your booth. So that's one disadvantage. The other thing too is you need to make sure you have a nice firm fitting to sit them because they don't sit very nicely into, um, into racks. You can sort of get them into your, um, your cleanup, but as you can see, there's a lot of leg there. So 
they, uh, they kind of sit up at an ungainly angle. So that's the thing. But if you've got quick release, compressor can go out the way, your airbrush can go into a rack or into your holder. So that's the thing. It's a different way of doing things. So yeah, you haven't got that, oh, you know, let's dial up this amount of pressure exactly and measure it off. Look, once you get used to them, you'll know how much trim, especially if you've got a quick release, how much trim you'll need to get the amount of pressure that you need. And believe me, this guy will give me enough to push it on a race. I've done it. Okay, so, you know, you need about at least 30 PSI, probably more to push it on a race. Fully charged battery, guns right, you know, the, the valve right open, away you go and you'll get style reads, no problems at all. I've done it in my revolution and I've done it in the Eclipse as well. I tested them all. It will do everything that you want your airbrush to do. So what you're used to your airbrush doing, it will happen. You're going to have to think about pressure. You're going to have to learn the settings you need on here. If you can't sort of get your head around that, you're going to have to buy a little dial, you know, that tells you this is the pressure if you have to read it off. But quite frankly, I just got used to what they do. And I can sort of feel, well, it needs a bit more pressure. It needs a little less pressure. I mean, I used to do that even when I set my compressor to like, like 20 PSI. I'd still trim up and down with my little snap adapter because sometimes it just wasn't enough or it needed a little bit more. So I always set my little snap adapter in the middle set, setting, right, halfway, and then I could dial up and dial down. For me, I haven't changed my airbrushing practice because I was already doing that. So those of you that go... I have 22 PSI, that is perfect for my Tamiya paint, Foof, you know, I have 80, well, yeah, you, you're probably going to have to do a bit of learning, or maybe this just isn't for you. I am sold, I love these cordless compressors, and this one is the star of the show. This is nice and powerful, and it's really good, it'll take my clips, it'll take my revolution. But, having said that, I still have a fond spot for the little no-name one. Because I've got the two pressure settings... That's nice. It's straight away I can go, click, I've got a low pressure to do a few things. Click, I need a bit more pressure. That's kind of nice. And it's slightly lighter. This one is a bit heavier with the whole new battery arrangement. There's a bit more weight in that one. But honestly, they're both about the same money. So it depends what you want to do. If you want more battery time and you want, you know, you basically... <sighs> you're not too worried about pressure, you'll take it what it is you're willing to trim, then this one's good. You'll get an hour of continuous. If you just want to do short sessions, but you may want to sometimes want a higher pressure and sometimes a lower pressure and you don't really want to muck around, then this one's the go because all you've got to do is push the button at the bottom and you've got one setting or you've got the other. So it's as easy as that. And this is quite lovely. I said, this is the one that I have used for the last six months and I have thrown everything at it and everything that I've asked it to do it has done. So, they're both good. Even the little black one, look, let's, let's be fair. This little black one, if you can get it with the adapter, all right, you can get it with the, the same adapter that's on here. So, if you get that arrangement, and you could put a quick release on like I've done, or just screw your airbrush straight in. You'll be away. Okay? So, they all have their advantages and their disadvantages. Yes, with the, um, with this one, you basically are going to need, if you're going to put a um, an eye water on there, you're going to need to build a little arrangement as I've done. If you can screw something straight on there that's like the um, like the Neo, you're away. But your other eye water may not fit straight away. If you don't have a lot of dollars, buy the low spec version with a single battery, okay? But make sure you get one with the adapter, okay? Make sure you get one with the adapter, because otherwise you won't be able to fit anything else to it. If you've got a bit more money, then look at either the No Name, which I like because it's auto, which is kind of handy because, you know, auto on, auto off. If you need more battery time, then this one's your go. Because with this one, basically, you're going. But you're going to button on, button off here. Either way, there's nothing wrong with these cordless compressors, and especially once you can put decent airbrushes on them. All right, well, I hope that sort of covered everything. I've, it's been convoluted and there's lots of things. I'm learning with this as I go. I might do a 12-month evaluation where I can be clearer still because now I've got the three of them. I can really find out what works and what doesn't work. But if you can see from my uh, spray chart here, everything works. All three of them will give you a result. Obviously, as you go up in the scale paying for a better compressor, you have got more control. That's the only difference.
Well, that's enough from me. So it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini.